Welcome. Good morning. My name is Mark Jordan. I am the pastor here at Hope Church. And if this is your first time or your first time in a long time, whether you're gathering here in person or worshiping with us online, we wish to welcome you a very warm and happy Sunday morning. Today is Pentecost Sunday, which in the life of the church calendar is the day that we celebrate the birthday of the church, so to speak. This is the day that we commemorate Jesus sending the Holy Spirit to bring our lives, uh, bring the Holy Spirit into our lives and our lives uh, in sync with the kingdom of God. Just before Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, he told the disciples, as recorded in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that when the Holy Spirit comes, you are going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. To put that in our, no, in our uh, local nomenclature, you're going to be my witnesses in Dallas, in North Georgia. You can fill in the blank of a place where you don't want to go, but all the way to the ends of the earth. What Jesus was saying is you're going to be his witnesses. We are going to be his witnesses in our hometown, in our region, the places where we don't want to go, and all over the globe. And this morning, as we gather for worship on Pentecost Sunday, we have a very special part of our Mission May campaign. During Mission May, we are focusing on two global and two local mission projects, mission uh, emphases that Hope Church is in, intimately engaged in. Our local ones were Murphy Harps, the first, week, first time we did this. Murphy Harps, we had our prom, where we provided prom for uh, the children and the residents at Murphy Harps. And the next week, we're going to be talking about the summer feeding program in advance for Hands of Hope in the first week of June. Last week, we started our first of the global outreach projects that Hope Church is involved in with Christmas for Cameroon. We had the 5K. It was a great time. And later on in the summer, we'll be collecting toys, education materials, hygiene items that we'll be shipping to Cameroon to get there in time for Christmas. But the other one that we're looking at today is Live 2540. Uh, this is a, an organization that is near and dear to my heart. And as our guests, special guests today, we have founder of Live 2540 here, Mr. Daryl Roberts. And his wife, Chrissy, is in the back, I believe. And this is Pastor Jacob Burstyn. Jacob uh, is the growth director for Live 2540 and is also pastor at the Emerson United Methodist Church. And so welcome, Jacob. Yeah, thank you. We are so, so glad that you are here together today. So welcome to Hope Church. Uh, for those of you who are worshiping online, welcome to you as well. Uh, and we are excited to have you all here today. So welcome. Welcome, Daryl. Do you have anything you want to say as we get started today? children that we work with um, in West Africa, the Philippines, uh, Ecuador, other places. Uh, we're just super grateful for this congregation, for this church. Super grateful for your friendship, Mark, uh, your family, Tiffany, Ethan, Mia, Deborah. Uh, we're so grateful for um, all of you and your love and uh, your friendship and your commitment. Um, I thank you. Um, I just got back uh, from a trip to Liberia and Burkina on Wednesday. Uh, so hopefully I can hold it together uh, here for you today. Uh, my mind and my body are not quite positioned just, just right just yet. Um, but I'm so grateful for those trips um, as uh, it, it, it sends me home with a renewed passion uh, to fight for those that are suffering. Um, for the last few weeks, I've been surrounded uh, by suffering. Um, and... It's a battle that we all are called to fight. Um, as they fight for their lives, um, we are called to fight alongside them um, in his name and for his glory. So thank you for today. Yeah, one of my favorite Bible verses was, is in Isaiah where it talks about how we're to take up the fight for the cause of the fatherless, the orphan. And so thank you for being on the front lines of that fight. And I'm happy that myself and our family and then our church is getting on those front lines with you. Welcome, Jacob. Glad that you're here as well. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Um, Hope Church, it's just uh, you guys, I don't think you guys know how far back you invested into where God has led all of us here today. Um, just with me as fun to start with, uh, you would think that that's where it kind of began, began, but that's not really where it began uh, for me. I moved to Cartersville about 15 years ago, and I met a family who had just moved to Cartersville, Andy and Claire Postel. And as a layperson, he brought me on board to be on his core launch team. And 
And we, we, we planted a church and did all those crazy uh, church plant things. And Hope Church's DNA was wired into that. Um, and then uh, as Live 2540 grew, I mean, it was a part of the well. And then uh, this guy moves to Cartersville. And I can remember uh, when you guys had just moved in, you were looking into our neighborhood. And uh, Mia and Bo got in that little um, four wheel and rode around in the yard. And she made him just keep driving around the yard. So I'll never forget that vision. Uh, and then you, you coming here, this is just God's kingdom work uh, continuing uh, to expand in ways that we didn't envision. Uh, maybe uh, that Hope Church didn't envision when the beginning was 22 years ago at the beginning. God's kingdom is continuing to push um, to all places. So I'm just, I'm just grateful uh, to be here today down at Hope. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's uh, welcome them again. <clears throat> Those... Those ties, those roots, they do indeed run deep. So uh, Live 2540, some of you may have seen Orphanated Liberia somewhere along the way. Um, Daryl, why don't you tell us about how it all began all those years ago? How did it begin? Yeah, 13 years ago uh, in July of 2008, uh, I decided to go on a short-term mission trip. It was a 10-day trip uh, to Liberia. And I really didn't have clarity as to why I was going, honestly. Um, but near the end of that trip, uh, we, we went to the village, um, uh, went to a, a little hill in the village of Balama, uh, where we were surrounded, I was surrounded by 67 um, children living in absolutely horrific conditions, uh, unlike anything I had ever seen. Um, there was no food on the ground. Uh, their living environment was, was absolutely terrible. Um, they were completely exposed to the elements. Um, but I knew at that moment that God had just placed the care of those children into my hands. Um, it, was a, it was a thin place for me, so there was no fear. I knew God was there, uh, and I knew that for me, heaven and earth had just come together, and uh, the vision had been cast. All right, Daryl. Your, your family has just grown a bit from two to 69. Uh, so I called my wife. I let her know uh, what was going on and sh that they needed food on the ground. They needed a, a lot of assistance uh, immediately. Uh, so my wife began raising funds uh, before I left uh, here amongst friends and family. Um, and anyway, she's been doing that ever since. Um, but... Uh, it, it began there uh, in that in July of 2008, um, and what I've realized that uh, as you're faithful to take steps, uh, as God has called you to something, and you say yes, uh, there's a pretty good chance uh, that there's going to be another opportunity uh, following. So over the years, God has presented more and more opportunities for for us to to serve, to to say yes to Him. Um, and we, we, we try our best uh, to be faithful to those, those calls. Uh, 2014, uh, Ebola hit Liberia uh, really hard. Um, I really knew I needed to be there. Uh, so we went and formed a team, didn't know how this thing was going to play out. Uh, the conditions there were absolutely horrible. Uh, but we gathered over 400 kids uh, during that time on the ground there in some of the hardest hit villages uh, and we still care for those kids uh, today, um, place them in foster care. Um, 2015, uh, my wife went on a trip to the Philippines. Again, she experienced immense poverty there, came back with a heart for those people, and uh, we formed a feeding program there. Uh, we just launched our fourth feeding program into the Philippines. Uh, it's going beautifully. Um, just thing after thing after thing. Um, God is... Uh, presented more and more opportunities, uh, and, but you know, as we as we remain faithful, people people have remained faithful as well in coming alongside the work, uh, so that we can say yes and we can extend hope and love uh, in the name of Jesus. Um, and it's been a beautiful, uh, beautiful journey. Um, uh, we're now into Burkina Faso. We have projects there. Um, and we've got some missionary partners. We've got over, we've got 12 missionary partners now uh, that we're able to participate with uh, in kingdom work and just super grateful. So you mentioned the kingdom work. It obviously has expanded beyond just Liberia. 
which is where it began. And so uh, somewhere along the way, there was a, a name change to organization from uh, Orphanade Liberia. So, Jacob, why don't you share a little bit about how yeah. the name changed? Sure. Yeah, so, yeah, started out as Orphanade Liberia, and as God continued to present opportunities, um, and as the collective of people began to continue to support us, and we go to places like the Philippines and uh, Burkina Faso and Ecuador, uh, and even locally, it was just kind of tough for us to communicate the bigness of what God was doing with the collective effort of people, um, like, like, like you, um, with the name Orphanade Liberia. It's kind of hard. People get, would get confused about, you know, what we're doing in the Philippines. Um, and so Live 2540 is, was kind of that, that nudge that we pursued uh, in reference to Matthew 2540, where Jesus is looking at the righteous and he's telling them, hey, you guys did a great job serving me in your life. And the righteous are like, Jesus, when, when did we do that? And he said, well, as you cared for the abandoned, the forgotten, the broken, the neglected, the left behind, the imprisoned, as you cared for them, you cared for me. So it was kind of, a, it was a surprise to the righteous. And so that, that Matthew 2540 command, live 2540, is, is living that out, is to actually living out what, what Jesus, that template he set for us, is we as an organization live that out, but, but we live that out only because of the people who come along with us to do that. Uh, in Northwest Georgia, these, these communities has been huge. It's something I, I try to remind folks all the time is, is we're an organization that was birthed, born, and headquartered out of Cartersville, Georgia. We're not a detachment from something else. We're not supported by another lar larger organization. Um, we're we're uh, this heartbeat, um, this collective effort, this heartbeat has made amazing things happen. And being able to come here today to share with you the bigness of God's work through the simplicity of what you may think a shirt may do, uh, we get the chance to share with you guys what that is. So uh, we get to all come together and live 2540. I love it. It's inspiring to me, and it, it really connects, as Jacob has mentioned, talking about uh, Cartersville and the T-shirts and things like that. Part of how we first became aware of Orphan A Liberia and soon to be uh, Live 2540 was Daryl was uh, doing real estate at the time, and he was the agent that helped us buy our house in Cartersville. And the very first time I really became acquainted with this, Tiffany and Ethan and I came, went up to Cartersville, and we met with Daryl and his wife and their kids. And uh, we went house hunting, and we had lunch at this cafe. And as we were leaving the cafe, uh, I was holding Mia on my hip like this, uh, and doggone it, the girl peed on me. Um, <laughs> You know, true story. Uh, she, she peed on me. And so Daryl, uh, he, he kind of looked over at Christy. And next thing you know, they're bringing me and presenting with me with my very first love shirt, uh, which I wore for the rest of the day. I still have it and love it. And it uh, means a lot to me. But uh, well, I want to say there's easier ways to get the shirt. That, that's true. That's true. Um, so you don't have to be subjected to that to go out into the lobby after the service is over. Uh, but uh, for those of you who are aware, our daughter Mia, she was adopted from China, and she passed away from a seizure while we were serving the church in Cartersville. Uh, and uh, shortly after uh, all of the, the main and acute time of grief and funeral things like that were over, Tiffany and I had gone to the post office to mail off some uh, thank you notes. And Daryl just happened to come in to, to send off some t-shirts, I believe is what it was. You're shipping some t-shirts. Uh, and he came and he shared with me that they wanted to do something in Mia's memory to help the cause of the orphan, the cause of the fatherless. And you'll see the Mia's Fund uh, artwork. Uh, that sun and the I am there is her handwriting. That's the sun that she had drawn. Uh, and the I am it was her attempt in kindergarten to write her name. Uh, and uh, Daryl and team were so gracious to allow Ethan to be uh, one of the main designers of the shirt. And so we started selling these uh, I am the light of the world shirts last summer uh, to help provide help for Mia's Fund to help uh, adoptions. And so um, why don't you share a little bit more about, uh, that's kind of how we got started with it at Hope Church, and share more about from the organizational standpoint about MIA's Fund and the adoption support that the 2540 is doing. Yeah, so MIA's Fund, um, we I wanted to, uh, we love MIA, uh, we love you guys, um, but we wanted to honor her and uh, we wanted her legacy to continue. Uh, she impacted a lot of lives uh, and What's, what's happened since the, the formation of Mia's Fund has been phenomenal, uh, truthfully. Um, uh, as five adoptions um, have been uh, processed and, are, and have been assisted there financially uh, through Mia's Fund. Yeah. So, yeah, it's super exciting. Um, 
Uh, three are complete and two are in process. They both have referrals. They both know who they are adopting, the little cute little girls. Uh, I think we have a picture of one of them. Um, yeah. Ah, she's precious, isn't she? <laughs> I've actually known this little girl for a while. Um, and uh, she, she was literally on the brink of death. Um, and uh, you see her now. I can speak nothing more than just say, look at her beautiful face. Um, so five adoptions, um, five families have been impacted through Mia's fund in a beautiful way. Adoptions near and dear to my heart. I have my oldest boy is adopted from Ecuador um, and changed my life. Um, and uh, so this, this whole program, the Mia's Fund, is, is a big deal. It's a big deal. And we're so grateful uh, for, to be able to do it and to honor Mia. I look out in the congregation, even today I see a bunch of Mia's Fund t-shirts, and uh, I'm very grateful for that. Even though they do not have any, they're almost sold out of the Mia's Fund shirts, we do still have some of the shirts that we pre-purchased at Hope for selling. So if you are interested in the Mia, Mia's Fund, you don't see them out there, just come see me after the service or Debbie Ewing. If she's out in the lobby, we can get you a Mia's Fund t-shirt. We do still have plenty of those. But beyond just the, the t-shirts, you see the evidence and the evidence of the picture on the screen of a child whose life is being forever transformed because of your purchase of a t-shirt. Uh, lives are constantly being transformed by the t-shirts, the love shirts, which hopefully you saw as you came in this morning in the lobby. Uh, they are still going to be available after the service. But why don't you all say a little bit about uh, the love shirts and where it came from and what they mean and, and why they're important to the ministry that Live 2540 uh, is, in, is engaged in. Yeah, so... Um... The Love Shirts have been around for somewhere around six years or so, and uh, the, the team went on a mission trip. That was kind of the team mission trip shirt that year uh, and came back, and you guys started, they started selling uh, shirt. People wanted them, so they printed out a few copies, and a few copies turned into thousands of copies. Uh, thousands and thousands have been sold over the past few years. Yeah, we'll top, we'll top 100,000 this year. So... Uh, Yeah, so I, I went to public school, so I don't know the math on that. 100,000 T-shirts times 36 meals is the, 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 the million. Yeah, a million. There you go. All right. But the, the shirts for us, um, you know, we're not, we're not retail experts. We're kind of mission folks who saw God moving in a way, and now these shirts fully fund our feeding program. And as people has, have collectively come on board with us, it's made more things happen. It's, it's given us the capability uh, to reach more kids in more communities uh, to now to where it, we, it's 1,400 kids are fed daily in our feeding programs. Uh, and they are fed with, uh, you know, our, our field team in country. We've got, we have, you know, the, the four of us here in the States, and we have some, some young folks who work our store in Cartersville. Uh, but we have 40-plus Liberians on staff uh, who, who make this work happen. This, was, this is the vision. We're not... We're not here to take us over there and for us to take over with our interpretation of Scripture. Um, it's, it's happening. Um, this, the shirts are so much bigger than, than just meals. Uh, the, the shirts, you know, we see the shirts uh, as, as an organization. Like, we see them. We know the impact that it's making. Um, and being able to come here and tell you guys the significance of just a shirt and how powerful it has been is, um, it can't be understated. Yeah, so the shirt uh, fully funds our feeding programs um, and has provided over three and a half million meals just through the shirt. Uh, we, we topped, we started feeding in 2008. So just in, in 2020, we were able to surpass the seven million meal mark uh, delivered. So that was, that's a, bit, that's a beautiful thing. Um, as, as that food is, is delivered in the name of Jesus, uh, as that food uh, delivers sustenance, uh, as that food has filled many, 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 many bell bellies over the years, um, and as that food uh, restores hope uh, for so many. It was once said that people can't hear the gospel over the growling of their stomach. And so I know that Live 2540 does more than just feeding children. There are other aspects and components to your mission and ministry. Uh, what are some of those other things that y'all have been able to accomplish or God's been able to accomplish through Lewis 2540 and the faithfulness of your supporters. So yeah, obviously the feeding program is very significant for us. We have an educational pillar 
uh, that is a big piece um, of, of the effort that we have there in country. And that's where a significant portion of our staff in country come from, from teachers uh, there. Uh, our medical program is a significant pillar, and our evangelization effort is also a big key. Those are the key pieces of what we do uh, there in country. So, Daryl, you want to talk a little bit about the educational piece? Yeah, sure. Um, so we have a school uh, in the original village of Balama, which is pretty far out in the bush. Um, we have uh, kids come from all the surrounding villages uh, to this school. We've, we've uh, been able to uh, put together a, a fine uh, group of staff. Uh, our teachers are, are fantastic, uh, which is a rare thing. It's hard to, it's hard to find qualified teachers to cover. Um, now, well, that's our picture of, yeah, that's our crew right there. Uh, so this year we're going to work pre-K through 9, but we're getting ready to add 10, 11, 12, so it'll be a full, uh, full school there. We have over 350 kids uh, in the program there in the school. Uh, we also have hundreds of other kids on scholarship and other locations uh, in Liberia. Uh, we also uh, currently have around 20 kids that are on scholarship uh, that are at university, agricultural school, and trade school. And these kids are just as all of you are that are in school still are immensely grateful for the opportunity to go to school and learn uh, it's a rare rare opportunity for them uh, and it's not only going to provide opportunity for them uh, as they study agriculture theology uh, nursing uh, teaching um, it's going to provide opportunity to to lift the country as well it's it's there's 70 percent uh, of the females are illiterate, 60% uh, of the males are illiterate. Uh, education as a whole in Liberia, um, I've been there 35, 36 times. Uh, I still can't wrap my head around how, uh, how, how poor it is. Um, but for these kids to have the opportunity to learn and to learn from qualified teachers uh, is, is a beautiful thing. And it's gonna provide them with lots of opportunity and hopefully that will trickle down to many others. Yeah, if we could pull up real quick that slide of the staff one more time. It's, it's a story that I always tell because it's a story we want to continue to build upon. The guy on the front row in the middle in the black t-shirt uh, is Prince. Prince was one of the original 60 orphans from that first trip who went through, the went through the orphanage, through the educational system, went to university, and he is now our school principal. His, yeah. And he has a new baby. And Prince has a new baby. Yeah. So Prince lost both of his parents in the Civil War. Prince's story doesn't get told if people across the globe don't step up as a collective effort of God's kingdom work to make that happen. We don't know what Prince's story would have been without you making it happen. And those stories are, are all over the place. And we have to continue to tell um, those stories uh, to kind of show you the bigness of what's happening. Um, I kind of went out of order there a little bit, so the, um, the evangelization need, piece is also significant for us. Um, one of our, we, we've been connected to another missionary family there in country. Uh, that's Emmanuel and Angela Davis there with their children. So uh, Emmanuel is a Liberian national. He moved to Canada for a little while and, and met Angela, and they got married and had some children. And so they've moved back to Liberia now, um, and he is a, there to train pastors. He is kind of our, kind of a pastor to our staff. He's leading our, our field team there through um, some, uh, like a discipleship path. So he's already doing some work and his dream there is to, to build a center, to bring in pastors, to launch out into the communities. Uh, and we, we're, going, we're helping him, we're helping him do that. We're helping him do that. It's, it's not going to happen by, by just us. It's a collective effort. Uh, and, and again, it's how effective would bumbling Jacob Burson from Decula, Georgia, come rolling into Liberia with, with my interpretation of scripture be to reach people with their experience. I'd be horrendous at it. Emmanuel and his wife, Angela, their, their ability to connect to that community, uh, into that culture is phenomenal. And, and Angela, even um, her, what, what she does is, is unbelievable. Um, she rescues women, girls who have been sexually trafficked and teaches them a skill and gives them the ability to sell something, gives them hope. Those children right there, that's not one, that, that's not two missionaries, that's six. Those kids are learning how to truly walk like Jesus and, and, and we 
are able to see and help make that happen uh, across to the ends of the earth. Yeah, so they are, yeah, they're a super uh, special family. Uh, each one of them a missionary in their own life doing their thing. Uh, the four kids uh, love to tell Bible stories out in the village. Uh, Emmanuel and Angela are doing their beautiful, uh, beautiful work. Uh, alongside of that, uh, speaking of evangelization, uh, we have 11 other missionary partners um, that we have been able to come alongside. And uh, they, are, they are teaching, they're preaching, they're delivering babies, uh, they're providing medical care. Uh, they are doing an uh, immense number of beautiful things in truly hard places. Um, some of the poorest places that I've ever seen uh, these missionaries plant themselves uh, and their children. Um, and they do it because they're called to the work. Um, they are willing to sacrifice immensely. They are willing to suffer on a daily basis. I promise you these guys are suffering. Uh, but they stay the course uh, because Jesus has called them to that work. And what can we do what can we do other than to come alongside these guys, right? Where we have been immensely blessed. Uh, we live in a, a, a place of abundance. Uh, and for us to be able to come alongside these guys that um, are just suffering for the Lord, truthfully, truthfully, uh, is a great honor and is our calling. We are called. There's much required of us, as God has provided us with much. Um, and we have got to extend our hands to these children, to these missionaries, as they are working diligently day after day after day amongst the suffering, and they suffering themselves. It's incredible to think about the impact that Live 2540 has had on the, the mind and the soul in the body of uh, adults and children alike. Uh, and to think about the opportunities that we have in our culture of abundance uh, to, to do and to help. And you mentioned the suffering. I know that uh, as you talk about the children, I've seen some of the pictures and heard the stories about kids who've come into the uh, orphanages and the hospitals that are just so severely malnourished on the brink of death, like the one picture we saw. Uh, Y'all have a product that you use that our Hope Kids are learning about this morning as well. Uh, share, with the, share with us a little bit about this uh, product. It has kind of a funny name, but it has a huge impact on the health and nutrition for these people, uh, these children. Well, it's called Plumpy Nut. We've got a video we're going to show. So before we show it, I already got, I mean, I brought one with me. Um, the kids downstairs are looking at them, hoping they don't open it. It's basically like a peanut paste. So I'd mentioned earlier that nudge. All of us kind of in our, in our faith journey feel a nudge from God to something else. We feel pushed to do something. It's in the Christian cycle, it feels like it's every three to five years. We feel like some holy discontent. And we just don't know what that nudge is. And sometimes we think, well, it's, it's got to be ministry because that's varsity Christianity, right? I've got to pursue uh, the, 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 the thing. Um, and this video we're about to watch of Dr. Mikey, he's one of those people that have pursued a nudge. He could be making a lot of money um, somewhere else in the world, uh, but he is, he is doing this amazing work. So we'll check out this video on uh, Plumpy Nut, Dr. Mikey. Liberia... Liberia faces a lot of challenges because of the healthcare landscape. So there is a lack of facilities really that are equipped to treat malnutrition. And uh, it's a huge problem. ELWA Hospital has been opened for close to 60 years. August 2019, we began a malnutrition program in partnership with the Ministry of Health. People are getting to know that we have this open here. Not only just receiving my novice children, but we are educating them also, and we are having a whole lot of success too. These two little areas with three beds each, and they just rapidly filled within a month of us opening. So uh, Samaritan's Press came on board and we invented uh, this area here, which is another sort of nine bed unit. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. What, 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 what,
give our babies milk and the plumbing up. So we feed them hourly, some two hours, some three hours. We recently had the Ministry of Health visit us and they actually said that we were the best nutrition program that was functioning in Liberia. We very much believe in investing in our local staff and local materials that is led from the grassroots, it's led from the people who need it. C1, C2, C3, and C4. Now we just created C4. So IPF can go inside, we discharged private 1A, can't they? So they can go inside 1A. We have no patients coming, we have no cases. The medication cannot be done with the amount of patients. This is one of the challenges that we are having within the program. The reason that we've had success is we've had strong partners. We've had people who have given us plum peanuts, such as Live 2540. We've had Samaritan's Purse help us with medication. We've had Swansea come in and help with the trainings and help with some of the staffing costs. The funding goes straight to buying medicine. It goes straight to buying supplies that we need. We've been able to, um, to save the lives of uh, many, many hundreds and possibly now thousands of children through this program. This little guy has gained half a kilo in the last four days, which is very impressive. You don't see that very often. <laughs> Boom! This is great! <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we are working towards it, but his body is still dry, so we, we take our own time. Yeah. We had a little child from Buchanan down the road who had been completely abandoned. The whole team just comes together in this incredible sort of moment. When her family came to collect her, they didn't believe it was her, it was a different child. And really they left saying that Jesus is more powerful than anything they've, they've seen before. And for us, I mean, that, that's huge to be allowed to be part of God's plan for these children. And that, that's always a privilege. So I've spent the last uh, last few weeks uh, with those children um, in numerous clinics uh, in Liberia and Burkina Faso. I have um, been able to uh, experience, been able to see uh, multiple times um, the impact of this little 50 cent packet of Plumpy Nut. Um, it, is, it is truly a life-saving product. Uh, it's a peanut paste, it's hyper-nourished, um, it's full of proteins, full of lipids, it's full of all the vitamins, uh, all the A's, the B's, the C's, the D's, all of those. Um, it, is a, it is a fantastic uh, product. And we are so grateful to be able to uh, to provide it for um, literally thousands of children that are moderately malnourished uh, to very severely malnourished. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, maybe ten, not even ten days ago, um, I was in a clinic uh, in Burkina, and. There was a baby there, six, seven months old. Uh, she weighed three kilos, um, which is about six pounds. Uh, she was able to take the plumpy nut uh, for the first time and process it. Uh, we thought maybe she was in such condition that her, her, her body wouldn't allow her to digest and to process it, uh, but she was able to take it. And I promise you, I promise you that today, that baby is, is doing so much better. Um, another baby sitting right next to her uh, was devouring the plumpy nut. That was, her, that, was that baby's first taste of the plumpy nut uh, as well. Um, it's just, it was, it was a blessing for me to be able to see and to know the end result. Uh, there were triplets sitting behind me at this clinic and they had been there two weeks ago, so this was a follow-up visit. And to see the before pictures where these babies are completely emaciated uh, to two weeks later of receiving three packets of Plumpy Nut per day, uh, the, distant, the, the difference was amazing. They were up, they were playing, they were cutting up. Uh, it was beautiful. 
that happens over and over and over and over again. God has sent this product uh, to these mamas who have no hope. So their mothers, um, they, are, they are in such condition oftentimes because of their own poor nutrition that they cannot provide for their babies. Uh, so we are able to come alongside them with therapeutic milks uh, and Plumpy Nut. And we've got some new products that are coming online soon uh, as well. But I just can't, I know you guys are tired of hearing about Plumpy Nut, but I I'm telling you, 50 cents a packet. I just ordered, uh, let's see, I, I just ordered uh, 300 cases. I just ordered another 45,000 packets. And as mothers, as people in the villages are becoming aware that this product is available and their, their babies are suffering, and, you, and I'm telling you, they're everywhere. These malnourished babies are everywhere. Um, they are coming. They are coming. There's more clinics coming online. I get pictures from missionary partners uh, in, in Edina, I get pictures from missionary partners in, in Barnga, I get pictures from the Elwa Clinic, I get pictures from Burkina of the before and after. They're like, oh, look at this baby. And uh, it's, just, it's just amazing to see. And uh, just a great, great blessing that we all have the opportunity uh, to participate in, to put these little packets in their mama's hands so they can scoop it out one little piece at a time into the baby's mouth, knowing that that baby's going to be okay. That baby's going to be okay. And to be able to do it and deliver it in the name of Jesus uh, is, is just a glorious, glorious thing. Um, but it's a big deal. We're talking hundreds of thousands of packets of Plumpy Nut. Uh, and we need everybody on board so that we can continue this effort. Uh, there's two new clinics that are coming online in Burkina. Um, and I just got, I've got a call this week with another one that, that contacted me from Liberia last week that is looking for the product. And I'm telling you, it's just gonna continue to pop, 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 because these babies are everywhere and they're suffering. And we have the opportunity uh, in the name of Jesus uh, to deliver it to them, 50 cents a pack. 50 cents at a time. Yeah, we, you talk about the, the families in Burkina. So these are refugees that have been, been displaced by terrorism. So they are, being, they are receiving love through being fed, medical care, hearing the name of Jesus. You know, they're, they're all, mostly all Muslim. So they, they've heard of Jesus' name, but they're seeing the love of Jesus come from, from medical missionaries in ways. They're seeing this tang tangible, these people legitimately care for them when they are completely desperate they have they're never going back home they have no idea what's coming next but what they do know is that because of literally because of people in northwest georgia who are coming together this little beacon of light in this this community this area is having such a significant impact for the kingdom for the ends of the earth um it's just it, the Plumpy Nut is just is such a measurable, it's distributable. We've, we've been able to connect to in-country partners, um, and it's, it's immensely important. So that's why we talk about it. Yeah, and it, it, I'm drawn to that Bible verse that says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And you have just a little pouch there on your leg that Amen. Uh, can help save lives. Uh, and speaking of lives, I know uh, as here at Hope, we've been going through Mission May, uh, focusing on local and global uh, outreach projects that we're intimately involved in. Uh, I know that May's been a big month for you. Daryl's had a, had a big birthday. Uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna out him, but it's somewhere between 49 and 51. And so <clears throat> you, can, you can do the math, right? But, uh, uh, but you celebrated your birthday while you were in Liberia, right? Okay, great. So uh, there's, there's been a great little campaign that's evolved from this. Uh, Project 50. And so, uh, Daryl, not to put you on the spot, but uh, tell us a little bit about Project 50 and the Plumpy Nut and how we might be able to help get involved to get this life-saving pouch into the mouths and bellies of, uh, of children across the world. So I know it's almost impossible for you guys to believe that I'm 50. 
almost, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. Um, well, we, I was just talking to the team, and we wanted to do something. Uh, we thought it was a good opportunity to, to, to launch a campaign, a birthday campaign. So uh, we launched Project 50 uh, because I turned 50 on May 11th uh, in Liberia. Um, and we set a goal. They were like, what do you want to do? What kind of goal? I was like, $50,000, right? Uh, so. So we push out the, that goal. I, I actually talked to a couple of friends of mine who are, are great supporters and told them that, you know, what we were thinking. And the next day I get a call, all right, we want to match that $50,000. Uh, so it actually turned into. And it's, it's one of those numbers, when, when Daryl shares that number, he's like, hey, we're going to raise $50,000 this year. It's like, at this month, it's like, all right, man. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my guys, man. I'm like, come on. We're going to do this. We wanted you to swim with sharks. That was our idea. We're going to do this. They wanted me to do some crazy stuff. But um, So the, the campaign runs for the entire month until May 31st. Uh, so I'm 50. Uh, our goal is 50. We have a $50,000 match. Two, two or three days ago, uh, we hit $52,400 and something dollars. Uh, and then we have the match on top of that. So we hit our goal. Um, but um, we need so much, and it's all going towards Plumpy Nut. So that's $100,000, that's 200,000 packets of Plumpy Nut. Uh, and that's phenomenal, that's beautiful, it's going to save a lot of lives. Um, but we, we've also uh, have a goal for a two year, a two -year goal, uh, which is uh, half a million dollars, $500,000. Um, so that, that, is, that project, that is still uh, in play. That goal is a 2023 uh, goal. It's going to provide uh, the total of a million uh, packets of Plumpy Nut, uh, which I believe we're going to need every single one of them uh, very soon. Uh, but uh, the Project 50 campaign uh, has turned out beautifully. Uh, again, a collective uh, effort, uh, people coming together that want to participate, that want to show love, that want to bring hope. Um, and it's, I've been blown away um, um, by my friends and my family and people I don't know that, uh, that want to participate, that want to extend a hand of compassion and a hand of love uh, to, to these babies. So it's, it's been beautiful. The campaign runs until the end of the month, uh, the, the Project 50 campaign. Then the other campaign continues for two years. But... Uh, today you have opportunity uh, to participate uh, in Project 50. I'll let uh, Jacob talk about that. Yeah, so this, this is a challenge. This is a cell phone challenge of can you hit the target on the screen? We tested this out earlier. Get so your you phones can get out. your phones out if you want, and you can go directly to that QR code, and that takes, takes you directly to uh, this effort, as Daryl said. You know, we get, to, we get to hear Dr. Mikey. We get to talk to him, have FaceTime videos with him. So we get to, we get to chat with him, and he gets to tell us I mean, some of the things he has said about what the, the consistency of Live 2540, and this isn't bragging about us or, as an organization, it's more of us being able to tell the people, the collective effort of folks who make this happen, of how significant, um, how significant you've been uh, across the globe. And hearing Dr. Mikey talk about it and just the reliability of it. So uh, one way is this, is this QR code takes you uh, directly to Project 50 for uh, our Plumpy Nut campaign that's going to continue. Uh, and we're, you know, how many more stories like Prince is this going to be told? Uh, what's the next story that's going to unfold? And we're not going to know the bigness of all that until we get to heaven and we'll bump into somebody and they'll be like, hey, you know what? That t shirt you bought out in the lobby that day, that shifted things for our family. One little, one little nudge. You, you didn't need to go chase something big necessarily. Sometimes it's those little bitty steps that God leads us to. And, and it could be a T-shirt. It could be a, a QR code. But it could just be one step of obedience um, somewhere else. So we've got the QR code today. And then also we've got our, we've got our T's outside uh, in the lobby as well. I, I do want to offer one more opportunity. Um, along with the, when you do scan the QR code, the, you have two options. You can do a one-time gift. Uh, you can also participate uh, monthly uh, with us. Uh, these babies are going nowhere. They continue to come and come and come. So we really need that consistent monthly support. If, if you can pull that off at all, uh, that's an immense uh, help to them. And 
we're, we're just very grateful. Love you. Love you too. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you for being part of this today. Isn't it an inspirational mission and ministry, making impact, real solid impact in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth? And we could put that in our own little nomenclature. The Apostle Paul talked about how we are to clothe ourselves in kindness and in love. And that's how we reflect the image of Jesus back to creation. And then he said to go and do everything that you do in love. And so as we get ready to conclude our service this morning, I want to remind you of the opportunity, but also the responsibility that we have as the body of Christ to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. And to know that when we do something like buy a t-shirt, help donate to make Pumping Nut possible, it's not just for the little children in Liberia and across the world that are receiving this. Jesus tells us that he is a recipient as well, based on the the core verse of Live 2540, whatever you've done for the least of these, you've also done it for me. So let's pray together, if you will, and while the band comes forward. Almighty God, we thank you for this day, and I thank you for Live 2540. I thank you for their vision, for their impact, for the mission and the ministry that they are engaged in continuously. I pray, Almighty God, that you may move within our hearts and in our lives to help us feel your love, that we might share that with others whether it's through the purchase of a t-shirt, the donation to help make Pumping Nut possible, or just our thoughts and our prayers for an organization that is actively involved and engaged on a single daily basis to touch hearts and change lives in the name of your Son and our Savior Jesus. So bless Live 2540, bless Hope Church, bless all of our collective work as we seek to share your name, your good news, and your hope around the world. We ask this in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen and amen.